Papua New Guinea. A mysterious island nation in the southwestern Pacific was cut off from the rest of the world until 500 years ago. Here, sheltered in the depths of the jungle, human beings have lived for tens of thousands of years, some maintaining their traditional way of life to this very day. Sparkling ocean, fertile land, a land of contrast, a place where old and new traditional and modern exist in harmony. But gone are the days when the people of this land needed to hide themselves away to survive. Now they are rapidly integrating themselves with the modern world. Mike served in the Australian Navy. A keen diving enthusiast, he opened a diving club in Papua New Guinea after he finished military service. And it's the best diving in the world, yeah? Um, beautiful water, lots of fish, lots of sharks, lots of whales. Um, not fished out, yeah. Papua New Guinea is made up of more than 600 islands, large and small. With plenty of its 8,300 kilometer coastline unspoilt by development, no wonder this place has earned a reputation as a paradise for divers. Divers from all over the world come here, get on a boat, and arrive at a wonderful diving spot in less than 20 minutes. Okay, guys, we're Port Moresby, the capital city. The nation's most important holiday is National Remembrance Day in July, a holiday to commemorate PNG's fallen soldiers. On this day, people gather in the Remembrance Park to pay tribute to them. In the solemn ceremony, an 82-year-old man lays a wreath on the monument. He is the first Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, Michael Samare. Samare lived through World War II and served as Prime Minister of the country three times. 
He is honored as the founding father of PNG for his role in earning the country its independence. In Samare's hometown, there's a war museum. The curator Michael has two crocodiles as pets. This ferocious beast is quite common in the swamps of Papua New Guinea. There are also tanks, guns, and various weapons of all shapes and sizes, the rusting relics of a nation's troubled history. We have 75 in this front yard here. Um, I think all those guns there and our tanks and recovery vehicles. There were a lot of specialist things in those days, but I do think all of these there indicative of war, which we don't really want anymore, thank you. During World War II, Kokopo was Japan's most important naval and air base in the South Pacific. The experience of war evoked a national awakening. Papua New Guinea became independent from Australia in 1975. In this ceremony, they sincerely remember every life lost, no matter on whose side they fought. The war also accelerated the modernization of Papua New Guinea, affecting all aspects of life. In a village near Kokapo, a well-known guitar band plays the Western instrument, also a legacy of the war. The band is made up of seven men of the same tribe. That, as well as their fondness of James Bond, is why they've called the band 007. The introduction of the guitar can be traced back to World War II. When Allied soldiers and sailors landed on PNG's beaches, they brought this instrument with them. By the end of the war, the guitar had become the country's most popular instrument. Today in Papua New Guinea, foreign musical elements are commonplace. In the city, modern pop music is especially popular with the younger generation. Papua New Guineans especially love rugby. The development of modern sports in Papua New Guinea is also the result of external influences. The annual rugby tournament is underway. Unlike American football, rugby players here do not wear helmets. Intense collisions and confrontation renders the playing field, in essence, a battlefield. Well, I don't know, it's, uh, it's the passion that they have for rugby. Yeah, it was brought, brought to our, our land by the Englishmen and then Australia. They taught us how to play this game and now we've, we've caught up with it and it's, 
It's the number one, number one game in the country. Rugby was introduced to Papua New Guinea over 60 years ago. Today, it's the national sport. All across the island nation, people's love for the sport is almost universal. It's growing all the time, and we have a very strong uh, national team as well that competed in the uh, World Cup last year. With all that running, no wonder there's hardly any grass on the pitch. It's been said that sports are a form of warfare taking place in peacetime. Well, here the wars and tribal frauds of yesteryear might have disappeared, but on the rugby pitch, the rivalry is just as intense as ever. Meanwhile, modern-day life goes from strength to strength in Papua New Guinea. This is a place where tradition and modernity coexist, where the old and the new go hand in hand. It's striking how the development of a modern economy has invigorated this young country, giving it courage and confidence. In Medang, a key port city in northeastern Papua New Guinea. A massive fishing ship returns after 38 days at sea. It was a good trip. They are back loaded with high quality tuna. Uh, for the canary, actually processing average 125, 125 metric tons a day. You can just imagine, if we are just one unit, how about the other canneries in, uh, around PNG? Means, meaning say there's a lot of uh, tuna uh, fish in Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea is made up of many islands, with a sea area of 2.4 million square kilometers in total. Its rich fisheries are a major source of tuna, accounting for one-fifth of the world's total tuna reserve. With an annual catch of more than 500,000 tons, most of the tuna consumed in Asia and Europe comes from these islands. Madang has the largest tuna processing plant in the country. The fish quality is uh, good. Why? Because all our uh, export is in uh, Europe. You know, Europe is very, very strict uh, market. When you say quality-wise, it's very good. In Mount Hagen West Highlands, Junior and his fellow plantation workers are just as proud of the work they do in their industry. From here, we make a bean and send to Gorga. From Gorga, they delivered from lay and export from sheep and they bring it back to China and uh, Australia and America. Our coffee is grown by a naturally soil. It is fertile land. Now we don't use uh, fertilizers. And uh, once we get it uh, processed, uh, we send it to Starbucks. There are no machines on this 20 hectare coffee plantation. All the work here is done by hand. Most of Papua New Guinea's coffee is grown and harvested like this, in the highlands, 1,500 meters above sea level, just as nature intended. Natural conditions result in a unique, fruity-tasting coffee. Coffee really is Papua New Guinea's black gold, the mainstay that supports the country's agriculture. Not that it lacks real gold, Papua New Guinea has three top-tier gold and copper mines and was once ranked top 10 in the world by total volume of production. Even today, mining continues to make a major contribution to the country's economy. This nickel-cobalt mine is located deep in the mountains, and the abundant reserves are predicted to last for another 40 years. A group of construction workers are preparing for a party. They're preparing Moo Moo, 
a traditional Papuan celebratory meal. Step one is to heat some rocks until they are red hot. Yam and sweet potatoes are staples here, but in Mumu, the pig is the star of the show. A whole pig is wrapped up in woven palm leaves into which they stuff sweet potatoes, bananas and yam. Then, the entire package is set on top of the red-hot stones, covered in layers of bark and leaves. All set, now all they have to do is wait. Fifteen hours later, it's ready. Party time. Time for the workers to tuck into a feast of freshly roasted pig. The mumu is reserved only for celebrating the most joyous moments. Like the completion of this sewage treatment plant they've spent three years on. Economic development is rapidly transforming Papua New Guinea, bringing with it new challenges, like the need for improved environmental governance and protection. Nevertheless, the trend towards globalization is unstoppable, and Papua New Guinea is actively playing its part. July 11th, 2018. Chinese Navy hospital ship Peace Arc docked in Port Moresby. And uh, have a Johnny pain, pain. Yeah, since 2018. <laughs> This是很合理的地方的第二次访问巴西了 over the seven-day port stop, the hospital ship provided medical care to more than 6,000 patients. Friendly exchanges of goodwill has made the country more and more connected to the world. In November 2018, the 26th APEC Economic Leaders Meeting was held in Port Moresby. Papua New Guinea, a young country with deep and ancient roots, made its debut on the international... The national anthem plays in Kokopo on New Britain Island every morning, too. One nation.
Kokopo uh, Primary School is right in the heart of Kokopo City, uh, Kokopo Town. And the students who come to the school, they come mainly from the town area. A lot of them, they come from the town area. But some of them, they come from the villages, which is a little bit far from the town. But they prefer to come to Kokopo Primary School. Wesley Watnabar's school is a key elementary school in East New Britain province with 1,361 students. As schools go here, it's a relatively large one and Watnabar is very proud of its modern facilities. Here, children receive primary education from the third to eighth grades. In our school, uh, not only in our school, but in throughout Papua New Guinea, uh, public school system, we are required to teach seven subjects to our primary school students. And they are English, Math, Science, Social Science, Expressive Art, Personal Development and Making a Living. Since its independence, Papua New Guinea has gradually established free education for all ages and encourages children from the tribes to come out of the forests and islands and receive education. Over 10,000 primary and secondary schools have been built across the country. These young faces represent the future of the country. According to the free education policy of the National Department of Education, all the children in the country are required to attend school, whether they are in the village or in the town. They must be enrolled to be educated. Only a few of them who live far away, maybe they don't ex have access to a school nearby, are the ones who are disadvantaged from receiving education. But otherwise, uh, many of the students in eligible students in Papua New Guinea are getting enrolled in schools. My name is Shutla and in the future I want to be a doctor. My favorite subject is mathematics and when I grow up I want to be a mechanical engineer. My favorite subjects are language, English and mathematics. And My favorite subject is and studies and when I grow up I want to be a teacher. My favorite subject is math. When I go out, I want to be an engineer. Everything is changing. The young faces are full of confidence. They believe in their future, in a country that is both old and young, a place where ancient and modern life meet and blend. They are building a brand new country and look forward to integration and acceptance. As the national anthem goes, Shout our name from the mountains to the seas. Let us raise our voices and proclaim Papua New Guinea.